On today's episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the West Coast ports are smashing cargo volumes. I am your host, Sal McCogliano. Welcome to today's episode. We're going to be looking at the ports of LA and Long Beach, which are doing cargo volumes at pandemic levels. Highest levels we saw in the West Coast ports was during the height of COVID, and we are looking at a repeat right now. We're going to look at the reasons behind that. Why is it all of a sudden the West Coast is on a massive uptick? What does that mean going forward? And what are the implications for you, the consumer, the shipper, the carrier of cargo out there? Before we get started, a shout out to today's sponsor. That's right, a sponsor. Not that they're giving me money, they're giving me a shirt. The crew over at Transoceanic Ocean, uh, Cable Ships, specifically the cable ship Global Sentinel and classmate of mine, Jim Ross, sent me this along with some other good goodies. Uh, big shout out to them. I appreciate it. You're going to send me a shirt, a Hawaiian shirt with cable ships on it. You know I'm going to freaking wear this shirt. So I want to thank the crew over there, the ship's master, ship's crew, everybody at Transoceanic, and of course my buddy Jim. Thanks so much. I, I really appreciate it, and I will give you a shameless plug whenever I can. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell to so be alerted about new videos as they come out. Here's the story by Mike Schuller over at G Captain. You can reference Los Angeles and Long Beach ports just smashed pandemic era car cargo volumes. So let's go to a chart by John McCowan. John puts out a monthly report on containers along with a quarterly one looking at profits. This chart he's been doing for quite a while. You'll see the percentage of West Coast percent total inbound volume. You see the month, you see the three month trailing average and then the linear by month key thing to note here this is being tracked since the beginning of 2017 what is different in 2017 you have the opening of the third lane of the panama canal that neo panamax lane that now allows ships to go through carrying up to 16,000 boxes vice 4500 boxes and what we see there is a general decline in the total volume from about 56 percent of cargo on the west coast falling, dropping below 50% here in 2022. But then all of a sudden in 2023, we see a kind of rekindling, a resurgence taking place here. And I think the linear track hasn't quite caught up. If you look at the three month trailing average, it is holding steady at just under 50%. Now, why do we see that trail off? Well, Panama Canal, obviously number one, but the other issues you had going on there is congestion in the West Coast ports. You also had issues with California laws that were going to impact the ability to move containers. But largely, one of the issues we saw was it was just easier to deliver containers closer to the population source. Two-thirds of the containers that go into L.A. and Long Beach go up by road or rail into the Inland Empire up in Ontario, California, get sorted in containers, and then shipped out by rail or truck to the eastern side of the United States. Well, the... Panama Canal allows you to bypass that, go directly there. And so we saw that, plus add to it the COVID situation when we had 109 ships jammed off LA, you basically turned a four-lane highway into LA and Long Beach into an eight-lane highway. You had congestion, and so that cargo spilled over to the East and Gulf Coast. Add to it, you had a labor issue with the ILWU, the International Longshore Workers a warehouse union and the PMA, the Pacific Maritime Association, in the midst of a union strike and, and negotiations, never got the strike, but people started pushing their cargo over to the East and Gulf Coast, and that number just came down. Now what we're seeing is a return back to there. Why? You had low water levels in the Panama Canal that was making transit to the East and Gulf Coast difficult. You've got the Red Sea, which is forcing ships to go all the way around Africa, so some of them are coming across the Pacific. And of course, you had the labor issue on the East and Gulf Coast with the International Longshoremen's Association, the ILA, and the U.S. Maritime Alliance, the USMX. Let's take a look at the data coming in from the two ports. So this is the port of Long Beach, which sees its strongest September on record. Dock workers, terminal operators moved 829,499 20-foot equivalent units TUs, just uh, up just 70 TUs from the previous record in September of 2023. Imports increased 2%, so about 416,999 TUs. Exports declined by 12.8%, and empty containers rose by 1.5%. So take a notice of this. Look at that split. So of the roughly 830,000 containers that came through, 
half of them are imports a very small percentage of them maybe 10 percent are exports going out and then almost 30 percent or 40 percent are empty containers that ratio is a really important one there and then mario cadero the ceo at long beach we have plenty of room across our terminals as the peak shipping season drives a record amount of cargo through the critical gateway for the trans-pacific trade let me be clear the port directors for these ports and terminals are always going to tell you they have room they want the business back la and long beach wants that business back it is a little bit cutthroat among the port directors and terminal operators to get business let's look at some numbers here so here's the comparison in september from 2024 to 2023 you see that two percent delta there between the change but one of the big things if you look to the year to date they're talking about a quarter increase in the number of loaded containers coming in it's about a 20 percent increase in the total teus coming into the port of long beach la even more significant we're seeing so this is the monthly report done by gene soroka port of uh, la handled the record 954,706. TEUs. Important to note, Long Beach is a much more well-rounded port than LA. LA is almost entirely uh, containers and passengers. Long Beach does bulk, tankers, uh, a little bit of everything. So that's one of the reasons you see the difference between them. Mark the close of the busiest quarter ever at the port, 2.8.5 million TEUs in the last three months. The port of LA is 18% ahead of where they were in 2023. In particular, the port has moved 7.6 million TEUs in the first month of 2024. So before we break down the port of LA, I just wanna give you a snapshot of what the port of LA moves. This comes from US trade numbers. They have this available to you to look at for certain ports, port of LA is one of them. So Port of Los Angeles trade is up 8.89% in August from last August. It currently ranks as the number two port of entry into the United States. Year to date, the Port of LA is up 12.18%. If you look at month by month, you can see that growth here, how July and August, and we're going to expect to see September above here, just demonstrating that the Port of LA is booming. Again, you got to go back to the period of 2022 here, where we saw such record levels. So if you want to know who the Port of LA trades with, here are their trading partners. 35% of the trade with the Port of LA is coming from China, so about one third. Then you have Japan, Vietnam, South Korea, and Taiwan. Obviously, it is Asia more than any other place. When you look at the exports per day uh, for the year so far, 26.2 billion exported this year. The most valuable is beef. It's up 62.44%, about $1.2 billion worth of beef represents 4.6%. And then the other top five are almonds, almost a billion dollars, cotton at 900 million, motor vehicles and parts at 700 million, representing about 2.7%, and then passenger vehicles at 634 million, 2.4%. And then when we look at the 189 billion so far imported this year, the biggest imports in our computers, that's up 13 and a half percent, represents 4.4 percent or eight billion dollars. And then you have passenger vehicles, that's almost six billion dollars. Motor vehicle parts, six billion. Really interesting to see the fact that motor vehicles are coming in and out of the port. Obviously, car carriers are a major portion that we see come into the port. And then the other two are cell phones at almost $5 billion, 2.6%. And then electrical storage batteries, lithium ion batteries, 2.4%. How does the port of LA compare to other ports? Well, it is the second largest port into the United States. And when we say port, we're talking about land ports. We're talking about seaports. So Port Laredo, Texas, the overland route is the largest at 6.4%. LA comes in second at 6.1%. 3.51 trillion dollars coming in so far in the year to date in terms of the port market share all right let's take a look at the port of la in specific numbers because i think one of the things we're starting to see here is the beginning of a um, potentially a repeat of what we saw in 2021 2022 so here is the last month these are the september numbers for the port again you're seeing an uptick from last year almost a quarter uh, more containers coming in when you look at the calendar year for 2024 as of this point it's up about 18 and percent and if you look at the physical year it's up a quarter 
And right now, LA is on track. We're talking about seven and a half million containers coming in, in in the first three quarters of the month. We have one more quarter to go. If we get another, you know, two million containers coming in, then that is going to rival. It is going to be close to that 2021 number of 10.7 million TEUs move through the port it almost definitely will be up close to the 2022 number of 9.9 .9 million teus and remember that's total teus both loaded empty import export moving through the terminal here is the signals report from the port of la this gives you the idea of how much is coming in uh the week 42 week of october 13th and 19th 120,000 teus coming in that is up 18 and a half percent from last week up a third from last year next week week 43 we're looking at 129,000 teus and then getting into the last week we're going to start seeing that dip come down but again not 100 percent sure that is going to be the accurate number 11 ships are on berth the average time for a ship on berth in the port of la is 4.2 days with a 130 uh, 103 ships planned out so far important to note about that 4.2 days that is long for ships to be on berth they're on berth for a long time in la and long beach for two reasons number one people will always highlight u.s ports are not as quick they're not as automated not as fast even though you have three automated ports uh in la long beach two in la you have the tray pack terminal you have the apm terminal that are automated the other issue you have that the reason it takes a long time in la is because the ships that come into la usually are eight to twelve thousand teu vessels they almost off, they, they'll offload nearly 80% of their cargo. They tend not to go to multiple ports and offload an equal amount like they do on the East and Gulf Coast. But the numbers to look at are the charts that LA provides on a couple of key metrics. This is container dwell time. How long does a container sit on the terminal in LA before it moves? They started tracking this way back at the beginning of COVID. When you go back here to the very beginning of COVID, and you see these numbers way back in October of 2021, you start seeing how many containers they had on board. They started tracking this back in October 24th of 2021. You see they were here with almost 95,000 containers. It dipped and then uh, climbed back up, and then it precipitously fell, and then they've been holding steady between 30 and 40,000 containers on the terminals waiting to move out. But what we've seen here is with the issues on the East Coast, with the impending strike, with uh, the reopening of this of the Panama Canal to its full capacity. Remember, it was down to about two thirds capacity. What we're seeing here is a climb in the dwell rates, and now we're sitting there, roughly around fifty thousand containers are sitting there dwelling. Forty nine thousand five hundred thirteen. Vast majority are only sitting for you know less than four days. But we are seeing upticks, and the one that's really disturbing is that yellow one upticking. These are containers sitting there for more than nine days. When you look at the import on dock rail waiting, so these are containers that are specifically waiting for rail. This is a subset of the previous number. Again, we saw it peak here in 2021 into 2022. It got down to a pretty good level down here, but now we're again seeing it peak back up, which means there's a lot of capacity coming into LA and Long Beach. And one of the factors that causes congestion in the port is the ability to pull the containers out. Rail class one is a limiting factor. Drayage, short-term trucking, is a limiting factor. Remember, a lot of laws have gone in place that have reduced the number of trucks that can operate in the ports of LA and Long Beach. AB5, emissions issues, whole batch of legislation went in. Those are two different things, by the way, AB5 and, and emissions. But there are a whole batch of factors that are at play here. And then last, one of the most dangerous ones is the accumulation of empty containers. Empty containers fill up the yards. More importantly, you're taking empty containers out of the flow of cargo in the system. Peaked up at about 90,000 containers early in uh, 2021, or excuse me, late in 2021. Dropped down to as low as 25,000 TEUs. Held steady at somewhere between about 40,000 TEUs. But now it's peaked up and is sitting at somewhere around 56,784 TEUs.
So if you're the Port of LA in Long Beach, if you're the directors there, if you're Gene and Mario, you're excited, you're happy. You need to remember that there are limitations of the terminals. Going back into the Port of LA in Long Beach, we're dealing with issues that haven't quite been redressed from issues left over from COVID. They fixed a lot. Uh, we are seeing automation in LA. We're seeing the movement, but we still have those limitations in warehouse space, trucking and rail. Uh, East Coast has got to get its act together. It needs to clear the uh, issue of the strike, the ILA, USMX strike. Again, they are working again. The ports are open. They only had a three-day strike. But until they get to the resolution of that agreement, they have until January 15th to do that, there is always going to be this hesitation. Once that is cleared, I think you're going to start seeing LA and Long Beach start declining again, and people are going to start resettling their containers. This is an ever dynamic movement. We saw this shift start happening early, talked about it early. We've been talking about this for a while that LA and Long Beach are going to see this increase. We are seeing it now. As soon as we get resolution in the East and Gulf Coast ports, expect to see a settling down. I envision we're eventually going to get to about a 50 50 split. That seems to be where the natural factors seem to be. Most importantly for you, the consumer, the shipper of goods, you need to be able to swing containers between these different ports to meet whatever situation happens. Port strikes, low water in the Panama Canal, the next black swan event where the next iteration of the Houthis appear. Whatever event happens, you need to be prepared to be able at a very short notice to shift cargo onto different routes. That is key because that ensures if you're 100% going into one port, something happens, you're screwed. Can't say it any better than that. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Want to give a shout out again to Transoceanic Cable Ships and the crews on board the cable ship Global Sentinel and my buddy Jim Ross. Thank you so much for the shirt. I appreciate it. Going to be seeing it in some more episodes going forward. And hey, you want to get your shirt on, on what's going on with shipping? Drop me a line. Happy to do it. You, My contact information is in the, ship, uh, is in the show notes down below. But hey, did you enjoy today's episode? If you did... Hey, then subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so be alerted about new videos as they come out. Make sure that you're still subscribed. YouTube, you like to unsubscribe people. Make sure you're still subscribed. Give it a thumbs up. Share it across social media. And if you can, support the page. How do you do that? <laughs> Send shirts. But if you want to be a little bit more materialistic, we support that here at What's Going On With Shipping. You can hit the Super Thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly, yearly subscriber. Until the next episode, Sal. Signing off.